It is a story that weaves through the complexities of a mother-son relationship, a narrative that challenges the traditional notions of masculinity and femininity, and a testament to the power of love in all its forms. Join us on this extraordinary journey where the lines between genders blur, where love defies the norms, and where a person in their quest for maternal affection redefines themselves and their world. This is not just a story of becoming a chief minister, it is a tale of becoming oneself, fully and unapologetically. Welcome to a story that transcends boundaries, a story of transformation, acceptance and the enduring power of love. Now let's start the story. In the heart of a small town, where the streets whispered tales of everyday life, there I stood, a young boy, cloaked in the shadows of my mother's unfulfilled dreams. My life, a canvas painted with the hues of her disappointments, bore the mark of an unwanted destiny. She longed for a daughter, a mirror to her own spirit, but fate handed her me, a son, an emblem of her deepest disdain. My father, a fleeting memory, vanished like a wisp of smoke, leaving behind a chasm of blame that my mother unflinchingly cast upon me. As I grew, her indifference was my constant companion, her affection a distant star in a sky I could never reach. Yet, amidst this coldness, my heart found warmth in the embrace of my grandmother, a beacon of love in my dim world. My grandmother, a storyteller with the wisdom of ages, spun tales of my mother's past, unveiling the roots of her hardened heart. Through her stories, I learned of the shadows that lurked in my mother's life, the pain of witnessing abuse, the scars of living under a tyrannical father, and the agony of a loveless marriage. These tales painted a picture of a woman who had grown to see the world through a lens tinted with mistrust and hurt, especially towards men. In her quest for change, my mother channeled her energies into politics and activism, her voice becoming a clarion call for women's rights. Yet, in her crusade, she failed to see the innocence in my eyes, the yearning for her love. To her, I was not just a son, I was a symbol of the gender she had learned to abhor. Determined to break this cycle of disdain, I vowed to be the antithesis of the men who had cast shadows in my mother's life. I strived to impress her, to thaw the ice that encased her heart, but my efforts seemed to vanish into the void of her indifference. My grandmother's words echoed in my ears, a reminder that the world was not black and white, that not all men were tyrants nor all women saints. I walked a path less trodden, shunning the company of boys, fearing their influence might corrupt my resolve. I kept my world small, my interactions brief, a silent protest against the stereotype my mother had shackled me with. In my quest for equality, I shied away from physical strength fearing it might one day become a weapon against the very gender I sought to respect. As the chapters of my schooling closed, a new fear dawned. The prospect of a hostel, a den of masculinity that threatened to engulf me. I pleaded with my mother, my voice a whisper against the storm of her resolve. But she, blinded by her ambitions and battles, turned a deaf ear, her decision casting me adrift in a sea of uncertainty. There I stood at the crossroads of life, a boy shaped by a mother's resentment, nurtured by a grandmother's love, and haunted by the spectre of a future unknown. My story, a tapestry of contrasts, was just beginning to unfold. As the days turned into weeks, my life took on a new rhythm, a dance to the tune of self-discovery and transformation. The halls of my college, once a battleground of identity and purpose, became a sanctuary where I sculpted a new persona, one that defied the rigid norms of society. My appearance, a blend of feminine grace and a young man's features, became a silent testament to my journey, a journey of becoming who I truly wanted to be. My transformation was not just skin deep, it was a metamorphosis of the soul, the weekly rituals of grooming, facials, waxing and threading, were not mere acts of vanity, but affirmations of my newfound identity. My wardrobe gradually filled with clothes that spoke of a subtle femininity, 
a delicate balance between who I was and who I aspired to be. Despite my grandmother's gentle warnings, I forged ahead, fueled by a desire to be the person my mother dreamed of, and more importantly, the person I dreamed of being. Then came the day that marked a turning point, a moment etched in the tapestry of my life. As I admired my reflection in the hallway, a voice, soft yet clear, broke through the silence. Turning around, I found myself face to face with her, a vision of beauty and confidence. Her words, simple yet profound, struck a chord deep within me. The unexpected kiss, a fleeting connection, left a lasting impression, igniting a flame of possibilities within my heart. Her presence, though brief, was transformative. It validated my choices, my journey towards embracing a more feminine side of myself. I found myself gravitating towards things that reminded me of her, the red lipstick, the nail polish, each item a symbol of the beauty and strength I saw in her, and aspired for myself. In the days that followed, I walked the corridors of my college with a newfound confidence. My classmates' perceptions, once a source of apprehension, faded into the background. I had found my voice, my identity, and it was in this state of self-assuredness that I faced each day. But amidst this whirlwind of change, there remained a constant, the unresolved chords of my relationship with my mother. Her words, the slap, the disappointment, they lingered in the recesses of my memory, a reminder of the bridge I had yet to cross. My journey was far from over. It was a path filled with questions, with the hope of understanding, and the quest for acceptance. As I stood in my room, gazing at my reflection, the image of a young man with the heart of a dreamer looked back at me. My story, a blend of pain and beauty, resilience and transformation, continued to unfold, each chapter bringing me closer to understanding not just myself, but also the complex tapestry of human emotions and relationships. As the sun set on another day, painting the sky in hues of orange and purple, I found myself walking through the familiar yet distant corridors of my childhood home. The air was thick with the buzz of activity, a stark contrast to the serene quiet of my grandmother's house. My mother, once the centre of my world, now seemed like a stranger, her presence as elusive as a shadow in the twilight. The transformation in my appearance, the result of years of self-discovery and the nurturing influence of my love seemed to momentarily catch my mother off guard. Her gaze lingered, a flicker of recognition, maybe even curiosity crossing her features. But the moment passed, replaced by the familiar veil of indifference. I couldn't help but feel a surge of hope. Perhaps, in the depths of her busy life, in the whirlwind of her political aspirations, there was a space, however small, where thoughts of me still lingered. Maybe, just maybe, she had missed me in her own way. Over the next few days, I navigated the crowded spaces of our home, a ghost from a past life, observing the changes time had wrought. My mother, thinner and more worn, yet exuding a strength that was undeniable, seemed consumed by her mission. Her dream of an all-women's political party, a revolutionary idea, had become her entire world. In the midst of this, I felt a transformation within myself. The relationship with my love had reshaped me, not just in appearance, but in spirit. I had grown more assertive, more confident, yet mindful not to tread the path of dominance that had so tainted my mother's view of men. My love's unwavering support had been my anchor, her presence a constant source of strength and understanding. As we awaited the approval for our foreign university applications, I pondered the complexities of my relationship with my mother. Our interactions were brief, often limited to nods and fleeting glances. Yet in those rare moments of contact, I sensed a change, a softening, perhaps a dawning realization that I was not the enemy she had once perceived me to be. In this house, where my story began, where every wall echoed with memories of longing and neglect. I stood at the cusp of a new chapter. The journey ahead, a path towards higher education and a life intertwined with my love, filled me with anticipation. 
Yet, it also stirred a quiet longing, a hope that one day, my mother and I would find a bridge across the chasm that had long separated us. As I prepared to embark on this new adventure, I carried with me the lessons of the past, the resilience born of pain, the beauty forged in the fires of transformation. My story, a tapestry of light and shadow, was still being woven, each thread a testament to the journey of a soul in search of acceptance, love, and identity. As the sun rose over the horizon, casting its golden light over the world, a new chapter in my life began to unfold. The walls that had once separated my mother and me, built from years of misunderstanding and unspoken pain, were slowly crumbling down, revealing a path towards reconciliation and understanding. My mother, always a figure of strength and determination, had started to show a softer side, a side that inquired about my well-being, that expressed concern in ways I had never experienced before. This change, subtle yet significant, opened a door to a world where I could share a part of my life with her, the love of my life. The day I introduced my girlfriend to my mother was filled with a mix of anticipation and hope. Their conversation, a dance of words and emotions, revealed truths and healed old wounds. My girlfriend, with her grace and honesty, bridged the gap between my mother and me. Her story shedding light on the misconceptions that had long clouded my mother's judgment. My mother's admission of her actions, driven by a misguided sense of protection, was a revelation. It was a moment of vulnerability, an acknowledgement of her own flaws, and the love that had always been there, hidden beneath layers of fear and bias. Her realization that I had reshaped my identity in a quest for her approval was a turning point, a step towards mending the fragile bond between us. As I watched them from afar, a sense of completeness filled my heart. The presence of my girlfriend in my life had brought about a change not just in me, but also in the relationship I shared with my mother. However, destiny had other plans, and soon my girlfriend left for her studies abroad, leaving me with a decision to make. I chose to stay back, to nurture the newfound connection with my mother. The days turned into weeks and our bond grew stronger, a delicate tapestry of love and understanding slowly taking shape. Then, as fate would have it, my mother's political career reached its zenith. She became the chief minister of our state. But with great power came great challenges. The opposition's attempts to tarnish her reputation cast a shadow over our lives, the tension palpable in every corner of our home. In the midst of this turmoil, my mother made an unexpected decision. She announced a break from her duties, a respite from the storm, and invited me to join her at a secluded resort. It was an opportunity to escape the chaos, to find solace in each other's company. As we settled into the serene environment of the resort, surrounded by nature's tranquility, I realized this was more than just a getaway. It was a chance for my mother and me to truly connect, to share moments of peace and reflection away from the public eye. For the first time, I saw my mother not just as a politician or a crusader for women's rights, but as a human being, vulnerable and in need of support. Our conversations, once superficial, delved into deeper realms of understanding and empathy. We talked about our hopes, our fears, and the journey that had brought us to this point. In those ten days, we discovered each other anew, finding common ground in our shared experiences and aspirations. The case against her, looming like a dark cloud, seemed less daunting as we stood together, united not just by blood, but by a bond forged through trials and triumphs. As the days passed, I realized that this journey was not just about escaping the chaos but about finding each other in the midst of it. My mother, once distant and enigmatic, had become an integral part of my life, her presence a source of strength and inspiration. Our story, a blend of pain and beauty, struggle and triumph, continued to unfold, each chapter bringing us closer to understanding the intricate tapestry of human emotions and the enduring power of love and acceptance. Under the warm embrace of the sun, a new dawn greeted us as we left the resort. 
The days spent there were a whirlwind of emotions, a journey through time and memories, a dance between mother and child rediscovering each other. Each day brought with it a new revelation, a new understanding as my mother tried to recapture the lost years, the moments she wished she had spent with a daughter. As we drove back, my heart was a flutter with a myriad of feelings. The resort had become a haven where I had experienced a different kind of love from my mother, one that was nurturing and affectionate, yet tinged with her longing for a daughter she never had. Each hairstyle, each outfit she chose for me was a reflection of her unfulfilled desires, a mother trying to relive a dream through her child. The sari, a symbol of grace and beauty in our culture, adorned my body, its fabric whispering tales of femininity and elegance. The piercing of my ears, an act I had resisted, was yet another step in this journey of transformation. A physical manifestation of my mother's vision for me. As I gazed into the mirror, the reflection staring back at me was both familiar and alien. The makeup, the hair, the traditional attire, they all came together to create an image that was stunning, yet it stirred a whirlpool of emotions within me. It was a moment of realization, a confrontation with an identity that was both embraced and imposed. The drive home was a silent procession of thoughts and reflections. My mother's hand in mine, the clinking of our bangles, was a symphony of a newfound connection, yet it echoed with the complexities of our relationship. The bittersweet realization that my mother's acceptance came with conditions, that her love was intertwined with her inability to embrace me fully as her son, weighed heavily on my heart. As we neared our home, the sight of the gathered crowd in the media was overwhelming. The reality of my mother's public persona, the scrutiny we were about to face, loomed large. Her decision to stop the convoy right outside our gates was unexpected. A pause before stepping into a world where our private moments would be subject to public gaze. As she stepped out of the car, the world seemed to hold its breath. The media, the people, their eyes all turned towards us, a mix of curiosity and anticipation in the air. My mother, ever the public figure, seemed to gather her strength, her resolve firm. But this time, she wasn't alone. She had me by her side, her child, dressed in the embodiment of her dreams. I stepped out, the rustle of my sari, the glint of my jewelry catching the light. The crowd murmured, the cameras clicked, capturing this unexpected revelation. It was a moment of truth, of unveiling a part of our lives that had remained hidden behind closed doors. In that moment, standing beside my mother, I realized the magnitude of our journey, our story, a tapestry woven with threads of pain, love, identity and acceptance was unfolding before the world. It was a story of a mother and her child, of dreams lost and found, of a bond that had weathered the storms of misunderstanding and emerged stronger. As we walked hand in hand towards our home, through the sea of faces and flashing cameras, I knew that our journey was far from over. It was a path we would walk together, discovering and understanding each other one step at a time. Our story, a testament to the complex, beautiful, an often challenging journey of human relationships, continued to unfold, a narrative of love, acceptance, and the enduring power of the human spirit. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden glow over the assembled crowd, a sense of surrealism enveloped me. Standing there, draped in the fabric of my mother's dreams, I listened to her speak with a newfound resolve and clarity. Her words, a fierce declaration of innocence against the allegations also wove a narrative of love and acceptance for me, her son. The revelation that my girlfriend was the same girl from my intermediate college, the one I had stood up for, was a twist in my life story that I had never anticipated. Her presence beside my mother, being introduced as my future daughter-in-law, was a testament to the unpredictable journey of love and destiny. But what followed was beyond any realm of imagination I had ever ventured into. My mother, in a bold and unprecedented move, declared me the temporary chief minister of the state. 
The weight of this responsibility, the magnitude of this honor, left me speechless. Here I was, a person who had struggled with identity and acceptance, now standing at the helm of political power, representing an all-women's party. As I assumed this role, I embraced my identity with renewed vigor. My life as a woman, a role that had started as a quest for my mother's affection, had now become an integral part of my being. It was a role that I performed not just in appearance, but in spirit, a representation of strength, compassion and resilience. My marriage to my girlfriend, the love of my life, was a celebration of our journey together, a union of souls who had found each other in the most unexpected of circumstances. Her love and support had been my anchor through the storms of life, and now we stood together, partners in love and life. Living as a woman, leading a state, and being enveloped in my mother's love, my life had taken a turn that I could never have envisioned. The challenges were immense, the scrutiny constant, but I was driven by a purpose bigger than myself. I was a symbol of change, a beacon of hope for those who struggled with their identities, a voice for equality and respect. My story, a tapestry of trials and triumphs, love and acceptance, had reached a point where I stood tall, not just as a leader, but as a person who had traversed the depths of human experience. The journey had been long, filled with moments of pain and joy, but it had led me to a place of fulfillment and purpose. As I looked out at the crowd, at the faces filled with surprise, admiration and curiosity, I realized that my story was not just mine anymore. It was a story that resonated with many, a narrative of breaking barriers and challenging norms, of finding love in unexpected places and of the enduring power of a mother's love. My life, once a silent longing for acceptance, had become a loud proclamation of identity and love. I was living my life to the fullest, not just for myself, but for all those who found a reflection of their struggles and hopes in my story. And as the Chief Minister, I vowed to serve with empathy, strength and a deep commitment to the values that had shaped my incredible journey.